Hello viewers, Super GT here with another kart racing video. So the last videos have been doing really well and I'm pleased to say that we have some more footage, this time from Buckmore Park. So I got the invite to do the endurance race here. Normally I do sprint racing and I will be doing that. But this is on the Saturday, the sprint racing will be on the Sunday. So a bit of endurance racing, not normally what I go into but always good to get out on track and this um, really gave me a great opportunity to go and do something really special because right in front of us here we have none other than Ayrton Senna and I'm going to prove my greatest of all time status by sending out the inside and giving him no chance so if you thought he was the greatest of all time think again there he is on the screen right there that's the true goat. But um, enough gloating. That was the end of practice. That was the end of qualifying. They sent me out to the qualifying. And here's the report. How's that? So it's incredibly tight. Yeah. All the top six are within a tenth. Yeah. One tenth. How are we? We are sixth. Okay. No, fifth. Fifth. We're fifth. fifth. So we qualified in fifth position. Not too bad. The, the top five or top six was very close, within about a tenth of a second. So it bodes well for the race. You don't want to be too many tenths off. I think one tenth off is okay. And we're rolling up here. So fifth place, third cart back on the right hand side, four carts in front of me there. As we roll up to the line then to begin two hours of racing, the left hand side of the grid really not getting a good launch. And immediately up, immediately up the inside into third, covering up the inside, going into heaven one. So we've secured third position up two positions. So second and fourth on the grid, not getting a good launch over the, over the start finish line to begin the race. That does often happen as the pole man is the man who can create um, the momentum over the line. It's up to them to go and then everyone else has to react. So quite often you can get one side of the grid not reacting as well, uh, the outside of the grid normally. So settling into third place and really just it's a tick box really, that one. You just want to get through without any incidents, no penalties, no getting sent to the shadow realm, etc, etc. So we've gained positions, we've survived, got no penalties, all is good so far. Just trying to settle into the race, ideally onto the front foot. Now this guy could probably go through the inside there to help him too. It is an endurance race, two hours of racing. There's no need to really rush anything. You can take your time a little bit more. If that was a sprint race, I would have been going fully up the inside, Daniel Ricciardo style. Here a bit of a bump as he um, goes a little bit slow into the paddock hill corner there, or paddock corner. But um, he's, had his, he's had his chance to prove his worth and he failed the test. So I'm going to send up the inside and take second. So I was quite happy to sit behind. I'm quite happy to sit behind if he, if he, if he proves that he has the pace. He comes immediately flying back at me but it uh, goes in a little bit too hot. I retake the position and uh, go back up into second. So I'm quite happy to sit behind if he's got the pace, but he just had a little bit of a shaky opening lap, or second lap, should I say. So I decided, actually, okay, let's just go past. And we can try to hunt down first place, who's opened up maybe half a second there. Coming down the hill, flying through the left of Pullman's into the right of Paddock, and then going up towards Garda. Crucial corner, this one on the lap as really good overtaking opportunity and it, um, and it uh, opens out onto this straight here. So you've got Cafe Curve, this corner here, but it's flat out easily. So Garda is a very, very important corner. Coming up to uh, turn one then, flying through there, apex nice and early, and then second apex as well. Using the red tarmac on the left-hand side, you can do that into hairpin one. Gaining already, see how much we've gained at the end of lap three, at the beginning of lap four, onto the back of the leader, already fifth to second looking for first already halfway through lap number four coming down the hill new profile curbs on the right hand side there also through cafe curve around the track so brand new curbs to get used to although not too different from cafe and immediately onto the back of him we caught him very quickly there's no point in hanging about just might, might as well go immediately through and take the lead so we're going past Senna for fun we're going past everyone else for fun into the lead fifth to first although we still have about 
one hour 55 remaining can't get complacent at this point as uh, so there's a very long way to go team race of course so five mandatory pit stops within five different windows and well you can do it all yourself if you really wanted to but i have a team of three here so we're going to be swapping driver after about 40 minutes so coming down the, coming down the hill really fast sweeping sequence of corners beautiful when you get it right and not beautiful when you get it wrong obviously if you get it wrong then you know what are you doing and so as we exit out onto cafe curve here then to so new profile curve there and here on the exit really flat kind of curve now as we cross the line to begin lap number six going through the first corner hooked up beautifully through that into hairpin one and hooked up with the apex very well going over to the right hand side on the throttle early here we have been two quite a weird corner that and then uh, straddling the white line on the exit to really get the car to accelerate a little bit faster cars going into the left hand side there that's the pit lane entry you can just see on the left hand side so to enter the pits you have to kind of peel off to the left hand side before you go into hairpin one and then you straight line you miss out basically half the track so but and so by taking a pit stop you're only losing about um, about 10 seconds a lap so you don't actually lose all that much time uh, across the line we go then so comfortable in, the, in first place at the moment we do have someone immediately behind but that's okay um, it, you know you really all, only trying to just build the gap to, to people behind so um, Joe Holmes of G3 goes through but it's not really a worry because we can just we can just kind of hook up behind and both try to pull away from the pack together and that's really an important aspect of, of endurance racing. Um, there's no point in launching each other every two corners and sending each other to the shadow run. You might as well just play it patient, just tuck into the slipstream, work together. So he pulled away on this first half of lap here. I kind of wondered why, but then you see here my car much quicker down the straight, but I was struggling out of the slower corners. So I think he had slightly better acceleration. I had slightly better top speed. So depending on where we were on the track, he would gain and then I would gain. And then there was a bit of a pendulum effect between the two of us. So here, again, probably within range to go for the move, but there's just no point. You might as well just sit behind, work together. We can pull away. So at this point here, we're about a second away from the people behind. So we've actually made a bit of a gap already. So it's working. The plan is working through Paddock. Just got to watch out for that bollard. Uh, the blue and white bollard on the exit which I annoyingly hit in the first round here a couple of months ago and it, you, you get penalties for that, you lose positions so it really isn't worth uh, doing that and especially in an endurance race you really do have to kind of gauge yourself into the race how much uh, risk do you want to take with, with your lines sometimes it's not worth the risk you, you might as well just take a small hit on time to make sure you don't get the penalties. So skipping forward a little bit, lap 14 now, skip forward five laps there, and you can see now we're beginning to catch up with some back markers. And is that back marker or is that just Nicky Richardson testing? I think it's actually Nicky just testing. But there are carts pitting, of course, so carts will go into the pits, you will begin to lap people. So that is a, a really big aspect of endurance racing. So I think the two of the biggest things really is dealing with traffic. So you're coming to back markers, how quickly can you get past them? compared to your teammates as G3 Joe goes into the pit lane so that's the pit lane entrance essentially you just go straight on at hairpin one so how fast can you go through the traffic and how quickly can you do your pit stops and then of course how quick are you on the track that of course still matters but um, traffic and pit stops really do seem to differentiate the men from the boys and girls I suppose there are some girls racing, although I'm not, I don't remember any girls racing today. So it is all guys, men's and boys, and Ayrton Senna. But I don't know which cat category he's in. He's a uh, god status, I think. He's a uh, he's a step above. Then I'm a step above of that, obviously, because I lunged him and went went past him. So here uh, here we are, first place, and I'm going to go in for my pit stop now. So there we go, straight across, reaching speeds of Mach 10, presumably, to so go into the pit stop. And just winding round through the through the pedestrians, and then we're going to stop here. So I'm actually doing a double, what we call a double stint. So I'm going to get out of the car and go straight back in. So you have to do the pit stop. You have to do five mandatory pit stops. 
but you don't necessarily have to change the driver. So to keep it simple, you just, you know, my mind's already into the race and we might as well just keep it that way. So exiting the pit lane, and we've actually lost a couple of seconds. It wasn't the best pit stop. So you see here, that's, that's Joe, G3 Joe, who we were battling with a couple of minutes ago. And that just shows you, you can, you can fight all you like on the track and, and gain one second, but then you can just lose two seconds in the pit stop and then immediately you're right off, right off the battle. So we've lost, I think that's about a three second gap right there. And that's purely down to the pit stop. So obviously I need to improve that. As I've said, my racing driver excuse is, well one, I'm not normally an endurance racer, and two, my foot hurts and I'm on painkillers and I'm high on painkillers I can't quite feel the pain because of the painkillers but I'm just getting really sort of light headed so that's my excuse if anything goes wrong that's what um, I can blame on so unfortunately we come up behind this back mark and he took a kind of a shoddy line I must I must say probably 4 out of 10 at best I'll give him um, could do better see me after class please up the inside we go then doesn't resist and we get the job done. So sitting here in ninth now, uh, by this point seventh, so that's purely courtesy of some people having pitted, some people not. Um, but once the window ends, then you will know exactly where you are. And this is a tight battle here between two of us as I go up the inside. So that was the pole sitter who just came out of his pit stop and we just got ahead. You see how close that was between the two of us. So I just um, keep sixth place there, or just gain sixth place as he goes around for a pit stop. But coming through turn one, I think he had a good top end, and he comes up the inside. And in order to minimise time loss, I don't fight it too much, so just let him go ahead. And sometimes it's best just to sit behind and just gauge the opponent, because if we can work together, as he puts his, uh, puts his hand to the side of his head there, the universal indicator of let's work together and try to catch up. So I'm just really just trying to gauge him at the moment to so see how quick he is. I'm quite happy to sit behind and let him do the work. He's kind of like Tour de France, you know, you're in the peloton. You don't want to sit at the front, you can just sit behind, let everyone do the work and just pedal off without really doing much, much work. Although, you know, it's still a lot of work, but he's really doing the hard bit and I'm just sitting in the slipstream and chilling out basically. So you can just see, you could, maybe just see the two carts ahead of us as they just go around that corner in front in the orange suit and the black suit that's first and second well what would be effectively first and second once all the pistols are done so at this point here they are first and second the guy in front of me now is third and i'm fourth and you can see there's a big group of back markers up ahead so the group of five in front the, the two at the very front of that is first and second then the three back markers and then myself and the guy third in front. So you can see how much we have gained actually on Orange Suit Jack of Racing Classics and G3 Joe. We have gained maybe a second or a second and a half. We were maybe three seconds now down to two or less than two. But we do have the issue now of having to deal with three back markers. So we have gained, but we've got back markers between us. I do need to stay as close as I can to the guy ahead. So he can kind of uh, carve a path for me through the back markers. So you see here, he goes up the inside, the space opens up, I just follow him through. It's a really simple task actually. Um, and actually they got a little bit hairy and I'm just lucky that guy didn't extend all the way out to the outside, left a space, I had the momentum and went around the outside. Okay, so we got through those back markers quite well, but we probably lost maybe half a second and that gap opens up again. So it really is just a pendulum effect of catch up when the guys ahead catch up with the back markers but then you lose the time again when it's your turn to go through the back markers so it really is a race of just trying to get through them as quickly as possible and again here just trying to stick as close to this guy as possible and um, he can kind of carve the path for me and nice and easy into hairpin one so a little bit later in the race lap 40 now so for those curious it says 153 laps it's just a two hour race basically so it's just however many laps you can do it turned out it was 153 laps in the end so across the line we go to begin lap 41 coming towards the end of my stint i'm going to do about 50 laps this guy then went a little bit wide there went in a little bit too hot on the entrance to go past that back marker 
open, opened himself up in the exit. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it now. And got up the inside. So that guy was fairly quick. I mean, he was the pole sitter. And we did go past him in the first uh, opening laps. But he kind of settled down into that stint there. And he was actually quite quick. He made a couple of mistakes. And I thought, actually, okay, time for me to go past him and do some work now. So, I think the main thing here, really, is just try to gap him. Get a, try, try to get a gap to this guy behind. Get a, get a back marker between us. That would be ideal. So I never let him do that to me. So I was always right on him. Whenever he went past a back marker, I followed him through immediately. And uh, he could never get a back marker between us. A little bit hairy on the brakes there. A little bit late. And you can see still precariously close to the guy's head. So in the orange suit about two seconds ahead and it's really difficult to gain on really good drivers Jack Harding Joe Holmes both really good and it's just really difficult to try to gain on drivers of that quality it really is a matter of getting maybe sometimes a little bit lucky through the back markers if they have some bad luck and you get some good luck then you might be able to gain but um, except from that it's really just a matter of putting in uh, really consistent laps, maybe even if you're gaining half a turn for a lap, then you can begin to put that, uh, get that gap down. So a couple of back markers here to negotiate into Garda here, my favourite corner to go for a pass, I think, as they can't really reply until the end of the main straight. And um, lap 46, still in third place, the gap's still about hovering about two and a half seconds, as you can see there, as... Um, yeah, Jack and Joe both going into turn one. Quite easy to see in the bright orange suit. So another back marker here. Don't normally go for moves into hairpin one. Uh, hairpin two is normally the best place to do it, but sometimes if you have to do it, then you just do it. As we get the job done there. As we exit hairpin two then. So, coming through the S's, and then downhill, fast sweeping corner this. New curb on the inside. Don't really want to touch it too much. It's actually quite, it's quite a steep curb. If you take quite a lot of it, um, there's a good chance you'll get flipped over into the ninth dimension. So I'd recommend that you don't do that. Unless, you, unless you're a fan of the ninth dimension, maybe you are. So in which case, absolutely go for it, mate. Be my guest. So let's just run for a lap here. Try to catch up with this back marker. I'll be quiet for a little bit, actually. Coming down the hill, you might have just spotted, or before, actually goes really wide there. We gained a position because uh, Jack in the orange suit, he went into the pit lane. So he's gone in for his pit stop. And we go past that back marker. Lost a little bit of time as we came through down the hill into Paddock. He was a little bit sketchy with a wide line, but we got through quite quickly. And then he bumps him up the straight, so a little bit of a thumbs up. So lap 52 now. I'm looking out for the signal to come in. So roughly a third of the way to the race, there's three of us the guy ahead goes in and you might have spotted ahead of him G3 Joe went in for his pit stop so we will take over the lead of the race so it's an important part of the race this so you need to have a good in lap for those of you who watch Formula 1 you know what it's like in laps and out laps very important trying to bridge that gap if possible and um, in the pit stop it really does make all the difference uh, typically in the race so this guy here just comes out of the pit lane and he actually points me through so that was actually quite convenient so not really losing any time there. So in the lead of the race and preparing to come in for my pit stop to end my stint. So I think that was a fairly good stint. Lost a little bit of time in my little pit stop, but still only two seconds or so off the lead after about 40 minutes of racing it was in total. So come flying in, there goes Ayrton Senna down the hill and into the pit lane we go to hand over to the next driver. Fuel cap is off. Gonna turn the engine off with the switch just behind the steering wheel. Out we get as quick as possible. They don't start fueling until you're out of the car, so you have to get out as quickly as you can. Handing over the fuel cap to the next driver and then just waiting for the fuel to go in. It's a preset amount and then away we go for the rest of the race. So one hour 20 remaining at this point here, roughly. So let's see how we do from here to the end. So with five minutes to go, 
it was Justin's turn, as you can see here, as it comes through Paddock and Bend. And by this point, we were in fifth place, and not really with a chance of gaining in fourth or losing out to sixth. So this is the battle for the lead. Orange Suit there, Racing Classics, Titan Motorsport there. After two hours of racing, that is very close. It ended 1.6 seconds between the two of them. There goes Justin on the final lap of the race. And ultimately, we finished in fifth place. Really good race, that. Uh, happy with the stint as well. So let me know your thoughts as always. There'll be another video very soon with sprint races, which are often much more exciting. But let me know your thoughts on this one, and I shall see you next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah.